approach, Your Honor? Do you need to approach? <coughs> I think it would be quicker than do it in the middle of the testimony. Well, no. Do you need to approach in the courtroom? If yes. Okay. Yes. Ready? I think we're back with the video. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Barry Barossett, are you ready? Ready, Your Honor. Mr. John Barossett, you're ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's bring the jury in. All right, and for the record, uh, defendant is present with counsel, assistant state attorney is present. How was lunch? Oh, I was okay. <laughs> Well, I can fix the snack problem. Okay, I can fix, I mean, I can't myself fix it, no, but, yeah. but I know people. <laughs> and I think they'll help me get some snacks. So um, I will work on that. I have gotten the temperature better, so, right? All right, so anyway, I'm sorry about the snack situation, but you'll have snacks, hopefully, when you go back that are actually safe to eat. That's my objective is to get all 15 of you to the end of the trial. Okay. All right. Thank you all for that. Ms. Jensen, I think we're picking up where we left off. We've got about an hour. It's an hour, right at an hour, folks. Brace yourselves. Okay. I wanted to at some point go back over kind of your timeline again. Okay. Um, if you didn't mind, and the day that she last went missing, can you kind of start with like that night before? Can I check my phone really quick? Sure. Uh, is that, do they have a problem with us bringing the phones in? I'm not supposed to bring them in here. Well, can I just walk out there and, like, check it with them? I told everybody I'd be, like, to work, and so they're going to be like, where are you? Yeah. It, it shouldn't take much longer. Yeah, we'll, we'll try okay. to freeze it. Well, I just didn't want to do anything until, like, they're telling me, like, where are you at? And my collector's supposed to meet me in the house, so I was like, oh, I won't be down there long because I didn't know. Yeah, it shouldn't take very long. Yeah, it won't be long. So the night before, how did that how did that go? Were you with Taylor? I saw her at um, Twin Peaks. Okay. And how did that go? Fine. I mean, it was pretty uneventful. I just met him up there. I didn't eat. Taylor ate. Cass didn't eat. And then, and then the, so that did you go home after that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what time did you leave your house today? Mm -hmm. On the, I guess it would be the 8th, is that right? Yeah, I don't know. The 7th would have been the day before. Yeah, so the 8th so would have been the day. Probably not till... The Saturday, right? One Saturday day. Things run together for me. Which am I going to go with? Sorry, that's a Friday. Friday? So that was a Friday. Um, and we're just trying to get everyone kind of went through this with Cassandra, everything that she did, where she went. And uh, Jeff, we're going to end up doing this for them as well. Um, is he in town? Is he not in town? But so you woke up on the 8th about what time on Friday? Um. Did y'all have like preset plans to go meet Taylor and pick her up that day? Yeah, she she and I were gonna spend the day together, so but she called me I don't know, probably nine or nine thirty, I would imagine. So we didn't probably earlier than that. And that is that when y'all made the plans to do to be to be together all day and or was that pre planned? I we planned to do that the day before, I think. Okay. Because I was off and didn't have a whole lot, you know, to do that day or whatever. Sure. So, on the 8th, um, something I forgot to ask you before. So, I know you told me before that 
you went over and picked up Taylor. Right. How did your morning go before that? I have no idea. When did you wake up and go straight over there? Or you, did you have other activities going on that morning? I think I was just woke up and woke up and went over there. You know, I'm not really a morning person, so. Let me ask you, what time did you, roughly what time did you go to bed the night before, do you recall? Was it like shortly after leaving Twin Peaks? Oh, no. Like, I'm not a late night person. Okay. I wasn't until, like, probably 11 o'clock or something. Okay. Do you recall what you, what you did that night? Um, I probably went to take
okay. She does his own thing, and hey, look, it's a little bit. does exist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he does his own thing, she does her own thing. Right. You do yours, and Zach does his. Are there any other folks involved? So when you say open, it's y'all are kind of open, but you have one particular kind of person that you. I do because I just don't choose to, like, I'm actually a very kind of shy person. Sure. <laughs> um, but it <clears throat> Zach not so much. <laughs> and just, they just push it out there. <laughs> and that's and you're cool with that. You don't have a problem with him doing his thing like that. Okay. Um. So after babes, you go home. And what? Sure, and then you wake up. Do you and Brandon hook up that night? I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You know, I just... Some days we do, some days we don't. Some days, I mean, it just, you know, we just hang out with friends or whoever. I think about is Brandon the one that there was the day that Jeff and I met you at your house and we were trying to get the phone working. Was Jeff the one that brought you over there that day? Or I'm sorry, Brandon the one that brought you there? It was a kind of oh, a white no. guy in a white car. No, no. That is um, one of my cousins that's in town. Okay. And who's who's that? Just Kyle Brandt. Okay. Um Where does he stay? He is from Gainesville, and he just moved back here, so, um, he is, uh, a kind of interesting character. Is he? Is he in, is he in school, or does he yeah, work with you in the business? No, he's at UWF. He just happened to be helping me that day with some of, like, moving stuff, just as, like, extra hands on that, but, um, where is he? Does he stay on campus out there? He is staying with a friend right now. I don't know where where they're staying. Oh. And did he ever meet Taylor? No. Or see her? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you go to sleep, wake up the next day. Do you recall if you had any activities that morning when you woke up or how that morning go? I mean, I'm not a morning person, so I probably would have just slept in the whole way I went to get dinner. Okay. I don't know. I mean, it's... I guess I can't go anywhere until I left out. That one. And then, so, can you just go up to your day again for me? Well, we went to... I went to Taylor's. Like, Nine Mile and Mobile Highway. 
Which is a pretty, that's a pretty short stretch, I think. Yeah, I don't think it's, it's not that long. On Bueller Road, though? Mm-hmm. It was on Bueller Road, sir? I mean, that's what, she was looking for a car or whatever, but it was on that road. We didn't see it. Okay. So I'm going north of, this would be nine miles, we go to this house? Where are we all went? No, we went okay. south of there from between the Noble Highway and Bueller Road, because we stopped at that gas station to get a drink. So what were we all driving that day? This is Zach's F-250. Oh, okay. Does it have y'all were driving it? Yes, it was serious. Can you see that bitch in my truck? Good Lord, he's got some bitches for her daddy. Yeah. I can't leave anything around the house. Well, but I... My car, or... No, my collector had my car, and... He had, gee, maybe for something. I don't know. Anyway, I got stuck with it. So. You say your collector had your car? Mm-hmm. What's a collector? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the lady that goes around and collects the money on the machines for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So you don't have to go do that? I typically go with her. That way I can talk to the customers and stuff like that. But, um, but she, you know, does it on a daily basis. Really? She had her own click every day. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, Ed, how, if you don't mind, how much money does that bring in? Like pool tables and. Some of our like pool tables will have three or four hundred dollars a week a piece in them. And the jukeboxes, six or seven hundred dollars a piece. A week? Mm hmm. Good God. <laughs> awesome. Sure you, I think you're going to have a bunch of them to make it profitable, right? Yeah, but my dad's been in this business for like 45 years, so uh, we have a you know, bunch of locations and a bunch of equipment. So So when you got in the game, it was kind of already a little a little bit, you know, primed for you. Probably already I so. Didn't have oh, yeah. so much overhead. You had to go buy tons of machines or anything like that. No, but it's just... It's actually not as good a business as it used to be, only because a long time ago we used to have like a bunch of recreation. You probably don't know about that. <laughs> recreation <laughs> centers and like arcades and things, mm-hmm. and you know now it's not really like that because they're like since Xbox and stuff like that came out, it's kind of changed. Yeah, okay. It's mm-hmm. as as now. Yeah. Right. In fact, we have those kind of jukeboxes. Right. Yeah. For, you know, <laughs> You can do the digital bar link or, you know, whatever. I, I do remember the arcades kind of dying out when I was younger. I do remember them, though. But I agree, there was more. Okay. Every mall you went to, it yeah. was, there was, a, like, a pretty big arcade. Um, yeah, I mean, you go into any movie theaters that I recall, there was, like, pretty big arcades. Right. Now it's, I think there's, like, some sole, like, standalone arcade places. Right. But I don't think it's, like you said, I don't think it's as... Well, we used to have one at the beach on the boardwalk. Really? Yeah, where, where Camp Funds is. Yeah, there. they used to be an arcade? Mm-hmm. Really? Never knew that. Yeah, it was quiet with the beach arcade, and then it was right there. The whole the arcade, or just mm-hmm. uh, rented the machines? Oh, then that one we, that one we leased the spot and did ourselves, but right. most of them we just put the equipment in there. You know, we put it in, and it's, you know, 50-50 or 64 day depending on whatever the split is. And, you know, we have, like, like we have resorts and things like that over in Alabama and stuff like that, you know, where we put games for their game rooms. They used to have game rooms and stuff for things like that. Do you recall 
how long you were out there at the store in Beulah? Are we talking, just so we can kind of keep up with this time, are we talking like five, ten minutes? Probably so. Maybe ten. Yeah. Okay. I think it's pretty busy because I think we actually had to move spots. Okay. Um, so y'all go from there to scenic. How did that go? Um, or how, let me ask you. Sorry. How did you get there? Do you recall which which way you took? I think we just went down the line to the interstate. And then I got to so the interstate right there in Beulah. What about Navy Fed and all? Right. Okay. So you get on there, you go to... I'm going to go to Phoenix. And then go with on Phoenix. Did you... Did y'all ever stop at a place or pull down like a little side road or was it just straight? I don't know what I Yeah, I don't know. I'm paying attention to what... You know what I mean? It's hard because... But that day didn't mean anything to me at that point, you know. It was just another day. And what did y'all go do after that? At that time, we went to farm. And then we went to my cousins. Or, you know, out of sorts or sad or, you know. 
each other. Was there any other family out in the farm when y'all went out there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what did y'all do? We just walked around and looked at the animals, and she hopped, hopped on one of the horses there back for a minute. and around. Well, she was telling me about her, I guess, Nancy in Tallahassee has animals, and they just have been there not much longer before that. Okay. So, she seemed relatively normal outside of being a little frustrated over the whole thing. Was she, like, highly intoxicated in any form? Oh, no. She probably only had two beers throughout the whole time I was with her, but, I mean, I just thought it was odd that she was drinking on the, I mean, that's not what I started my day with, you know. Sure, well, I mean, <laughs> to each her own. Um, so y'all left the farm in Milton and went where? Back to my house. Okay, and can you kind of walk me through that drive, anything that stood out to you that you can remember? Do you recall, I know this, I know it's been a month, but do you recall, like, which roads you may have taken back? Maybe Davis Highway or Fairfield or how I would usually go to the interstate to Fairfield or... Okay. Um, can you go back? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, so you get back to the house, then what? Then I went inside. And then... That's when she left. Okay. I, I think you mentioned something about another phone that she may have had. Is that... Right. What, what kind of... What's going on with that? I don't know. I've never seen her with it before that day. Okay. Um, anything that stands out about it? Have her ever mentioned any, any cellular provider she had? No. The only thing I... I mean, I ever thought that was odd is because her number was the... South Florida number. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I didn't, I don't think she, any of her phones were in her name. Mm-hmm. Um, right before that part of ways, what was her attitude like? I didn't get the impression that she was overly stressed or anxious or. I just didn't think anything of it when she said, you know, I think we're going to have a year. So, okay. It's just different. Um, when she spoke about Drake, or when you saw her around Drake, when they were, what was that like? Did she seem, I mean, as, a, as a mother yourself, how did I she seem? I didn't even know she had a son until this summer. She never really talked about him that much. Did she ever talk about calling him or anything like that? No, like I said, I mean, I didn't know that she had him until, like, she just never, ever mentioned it. But, I mean, then in the course of summer, he came down some, and she, you know, that's why I met him and whatever, but I know I had to watch him those two days. How old is he? He's a great kid. I mean, smart, full energy, well spoken. You know, I mean, he's a, he's a good kid. As, as a mother yourself, do you, what kind of person do you think it takes to just leave a child like that? I wouldn't leave mine. Do you think that Taylor? had that personality or was that kind of person that she could do that? Well, I would I would say no, but I also know that she did tell me that she never wanted children. And this is her biological child. This wasn't like Jeff's kid no, that no, she came in the picture. Child. Okay. And, and I think she had that discussion maybe with Cass too. I don't know, but we were talking about, like, her, whether, you know, she liked girls or guys and why, and I, you know, she said that 
part of the time she felt like she was with Jeff because she felt like that's what she needed to do. She needed to, like, get married to the hunky guy and have a child and, you know, but it wasn't, like, her ultimate lifestyle or whatever, you yeah, know. Yeah, it was, like, the family. Right. Just I'm sticking Yeah. Uh, do you have anything? I do. Um, when I was told that we checked into the bank stuff, when, oh, sure. when we checked into your phone calls, do you remember dialing 911 the morning, that morning? Oh. Tell, me, tell me what happened. Early that morning? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay, yeah, tell me what happened. Okay. <laughs> I do now. <laughs> I figured that was good. Not one or. You called 911 and the police department. Okay, I don't remember calling 911, but I remember calling the police department. It's because. No, it's fine. I remember doing it on Saturday night. Because there was a fight at Babe prior to that, and we were checking to see if somebody had a warrant. We asked the desk sergeant if, uh, if there was a warrant for two people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like people that y'all didn't like that were there? No, the, no, like, Brandon wanted to know if he had a warrant. <laughs> yeah. Why did he have a warrant? Because of this fight. Uh, there was a fight prior to that at, at Babe, and, uh, so he didn't know, like, there was a bunch of people involved, I guess, in it, and I don't know that he was in it. I, I, I don't think he was in the fight, but... That day? No, 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 no. Oh, like, okay. like a week or so before. And I guess there was a whole bunch of people involved, and he was trying to make sure that he wasn't, like, one of the people that was, you know, because they fight up there all the time. Like, yeah, there's constantly do. some sort of silliness going on. Well, and he, well, he is the uh, tugboat captain with Coast Guard. I mean, so he can't be, like, involved in any kind of, like, Brandon is? Yeah. So, any kind of shady whatever. And so, he was like, I hope they don't have some work for this fight because all these people were, you know, they get a parking lot full of whatever and then they're all pushing each other. Next this. Did um, you and Brandon, you and Brandon witness a wreck on the bridge that morning? Oh, yeah. That. Okay, now I remember the days run together. Yes, a car hit the side rail, and we called um, F FHP responded. Okay. Um, did, did he attend the call from his phone and then die or something like that? That I don't know. Were you all in the same car together? No, we were in some cars. Who was with you? No way. Who was with him? No way. Where were we all headed to? His boat. Okay. And where's his boat kept at? Uh, Island Cove Marina. Where's that at? Off of where guess, first ridge of the race. Like off of Wise Lane, I think it is. Is that Wise? You go across the bridge? Go across the bridge from where? Okay, yeah, I think that's Wise. Okay. All right. Uh, do you know how um, cell towers work and how phones communicate with cell towers? Okay. What happens is your phone, well, I mean, I'm sure they it's still communicating with the tower, even oh, yeah. if it's in this building. Sure. It's telling us, that way it knows if you get a call, it picks up the tower, this is probably a strength. Okay. Um, and based off that, the tower can tell you what sector of the tower you're communicating with. Um, So I'm going to try to okay. draw all this the best that I can. Let's well, say like the tower is right in the middle here. Mm -hmm. And that tower covers that much area. Right. So most towers are have three different sides on it. So it's going to equal to a, a pie like that. Mm -hmm. And it can tell you if you're on this sector, this sector, this sector. Um, and we have got all this, these things right here, mm -hmm. 
What's up? You know what's about how you picked her up? Let me ask you that. That may be easier. Probably. I thought it was about 10.30, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Then, for some reason, they didn't capture any more towers from 10.30 to 12.10. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, at 12.10, you are in here. Mm -hmm. We know that your aunt and uncle and Kyle own the farm there on Brick Road. Right. And it's showing that you're probably near that farm, or if not, at that farm. And you're there when, this is the time when you're telling us that you're probably in Milton or headed towards Milton. Because it's 12.10 uh, in the afternoon. We were still on the Beulah side then. Yeah, but if you're at that Tom Thumb, it's going to be covering down here. Not up here. The, okay. tom, the tom Thumb is not covered by this tower. Okay. 12.10. 1242, 1246, you're still covering the farm, 1247, 1301, or sorry, 1311, which is 111. You're calling, you've been calling? Mm, there's no telling, like, we, I, I get so many calls each day. You're out here for quite a while. Then you, you, you leave around, at least at 1344, your phone's not communicating with the part of the tower that covers the river. What were y'all doing out there at this farm? So we know y'all were there. We picked up some um, stuff that Taylor had there that we had. What was that? That she had stored. Uh, some kind of lockbox that she had. Why would you not tell us that originally? Because she asked me not to tell anyone ever. That's not again. I gotcha. Okay. Did you text Kyle that day asking who is at home? Mm, that I don't know. Probably not. I mean, he wouldn't. He wouldn't care if I was there. Would you have contacted anyone and asked if anyone else was going to be out there? No. Mm. When did Taylor, you and Taylor, take this safe at Lockbox out there? Um. Two weeks before. Okay. And who has access to that lockbox? She does. What was that? That, I don't know. And so y'all left there, where did y'all go? Um, I Probably. Actually, you're trying to find closure. Do you go back out to this farm after y'all leave? To set her box up? Um, I'm asking you, do you go back out to the farm after y'all leave? Mm, maybe, I don't think so. You don't think so? I mean, it, I don't care since that day was not that eventful for us. Mm -hmm. Take the differ. I very, I beg to differ with you there. Was Mr. Beattie with y'all when y'all went out there? No. He wasn't with y'all? Okay. He's not going to have any towers showing out there. No, I don't know. Okay. So it was just you and her? Mm -hmm. Nobody else? Zach wasn't with you? Mm -hmm. Did you call and have anyone come meet you out there or text to come meet you out there? No. Okay. okay. So you leave. Looks like maybe you go back to your house. I don't know where y'all go. This is at the uh, 157. Right. Okay. When you leave there, that's why it's important. When y'all leave there, where do y'all go? I don't know. I mean, it was it like I said, it wasn't like we were just really kind of running around. What was going through your mind at that time? What do you mean? What were you thinking about? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was kind of a regular day. It's a regular day? I mean, that. If it's so regular, why would that tell us about this? Even if she didn't want you to tell us about it, we're working at missing person case where your friend for over a year is missing. I honestly didn't think it was 
very important to this at all. Why was the rest of the day important, though? I mean, really, that whole day was not. I mean, like, us going to my office for anything about I think something happened and you're trying to forget about it, personally. Okay. Um, and, and that's fine. That's fine. Here's the thing. You, you told us that y'all went out to Milton and Red Horse. Right. Honestly, did that happen? Yes, it did. So, you'll have cell targets. There out should be the cell targets in Milton at some point in my day. Not, mm -hmm. not when you're having dinner with Zoe. No. But after you left Bula. There should be. I've no left an hour. hours, no. Well, after you got there, was that? Phone calls. Yeah, you had phone calls all day because here's your phone. Oh, right. sure. 160 pages worth. Oh, I understand. All right, so you go back out there. When you say you're not sure if you went back out, probably didn't. You actually did go back out there okay. at 245. And you're out there for quite a while again. So really, in essence, you spent, it seems like, at least a large portion of the majority of your day out here. It really wasn't, though. I mean, we were... Several hours. Here and... And look, at this point, yeah, there's two different phone calls. There's two different gotcha. So, like Chad said, you know, I feel there's a reason you don't want to tell us this, but the thing is, I know you're not a bad person, right? This is a person, you're someone who tells me that if your friend goes in the hospital, when you're going on a vacation, right, to probably one of the funniest, funnest cities in the southeast region. Yeah. Yeah. The best, right? Awesome. So you're going to this place that's going to be a blast with friends that are going to be fun to be around. Oh, sure. Right? And then you have one of your friends who goes to the hospital. Instead of you going out with other people who continue to go on and have fun, am I, am I right? Right. To Sandra and Taylor. Uh, you say, you know what? My friend's more important. I'm going to the hospital with my friend. Right. Right? Not only did you do that, you told me that you went back to Pensacola, took care of business that you had no choice but to take care of. And instead of going on about, on about your married way, you drove back over here, back over to New Orleans to see your friend to check on your friend. I can tell you now I have probably very few, if any, friends that I would do that for. Right. Which tells me that you're probably a nicer person than I am. Right? I, and I believe that. I believe that story. I believe without a doubt that you went back just to check on your friend and to see how she was. Sure. And only a decent person would do that. Right, you have nothing. What do you have to gain by driving all the way back in? No, I agree. So, you know, again, we're talking about a little baby boy who's missing his mom, and we need to let him know what happened. I don't know what happened. Next, this. Why did you go back out to that farm on Brent Road the next morning? Mm, maybe to feed horses. I don't know. <clears throat> was that something you normally do? Because we don't find you going back out there too many times. No, it just depends on what they have going on. So when's the last time you remember putting your eyes on Taylor? Um, when we were at the house. That afternoon? Right. Or that early evening? Right. On the 8th. Not the night. On the 8th. You went to the Taylor's wedding, right? Yes. You and Zach. Right. In the words of that? Now, what time was the wedding? Um, I don't know. Did y'all stay for both the ceremony and a little bit for the reception? Um, that stayed the whole time. I didn't. Do you know about what time you left? Um, I don't know either. But it probably wasn't late. What did you drive out there? The Jeep. What did Zach drive? He rode back with, no, we drove the truck. He rode back with, uh, Milton. So you drove, you left in the truck or the Jeep? The Jeep. Which Jeep? Right. Well, you said you drove the truck out of the car. I'm confused now. I don't know. I don't really remember what we drove, but tell me. You drove the truck or the Jeep? What, the Jeep. what vehicle did Ashley leave for personal property in at your house? 
um, she had some in the Jeep and some in the truck. What property did she have in the Jeep? Um, her wings and stuff and... In the Jeep? That, yeah, in the box, maybe. What did she leave in the truck? Um, I don't know, maybe... Have you collected all that property up? Mm -hmm. And you've given it back to Cassandra, or do you still have some of it? No, I don't have any of it. You've given everything back to Cassandra that's in the truck? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Um, are those vehicles like really messy? Mm -hmm. <coughs> I mean, it depends on the day. Do you recall if on those days those vehicles were filled with a bunch of stuff? It's possible. Mm -hmm. when, when you're at the wedding, mm -hmm. this is the tower your phone was bouncing off of, mm -hmm. of course, communicating with. Mm -hmm. um, now, we did the same thing for Taylor's phone. Mm -hmm. okay. This is the day of her, her disappearance. Right. She's, probably, she's either at your house or at right. probably at her house at 9 11. Right. Cause, uh, Cassandra said she didn't leave until closer to 10 o'clock, she called. Okay. okay. So she had two phone calls at around 9-11. 9-13, she's still at the same house, probably. 9-48, she's at the same area. 10-10, same, same tower, same sector of the tower. Right. Okay. Could be your house or her house. Right. Probably her house. Because she calls either FHP or... FDLE is who this number comes back to. Okay. It's a state phone. Do you remember making a phone call to one of them while you're all together? No. All right. So the next morning, her phone, this is the day after she was disappeared. Right. Okay. At 2017, mm -hmm. that's uh, 817, the first phone call, her phone is communicating with the tower that covers your house. Okay. Not her house, your house. Again, same tower. Right. Same place. 2820, all these are incoming calls, they're not outgoing calls. Right. Uh, same tower, covering your house. Right. 911, her phone's obviously moving because it's over here off a of nine mile in the interstate somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we're in that area. Okay. Still moving. Uh, 753. Mm -hmm. 1753. So, I'm glad it goes backwards. You know, it arrives back at your house later on that evening. Right. Okay. Your phone and her phone is communicating off the same tower, mm -hmm. eight minutes apart. Why do you have her phone or why is she with you? She wasn't with me and I was unaware that I had her phone. How did you get her phone? I don't know that I have her phone. I mean, it could have been in the stuff that she had in the vehicle, but... Here's the problem with that. You said you got a text message from her the evening of the 8th saying, hey, I'm okay, I just got to get away and get my head clear. Mm -hmm. That's not possible. So the phone well, was... You have, have her phone. I don't have her phone. Well, at that point, at that time, a text came from her phone to your phone, according to you. Saying, well, I mean, that's what popped up on my phone. What? I mean, I had a message pop up on my phone. How did her phone end up back in your truck? That I don't know. I mean, that's what I mean. I don't know that it ever left. I don't, I mean, I just got her stuff and took it to pass. I suppose when she left with her phone, because she sent you a text message. That's what you're saying. She had two phones. But the phone that she sent you a text message on is the same phone that that tower ping's hitting off of. It may be, but that I have no idea. Where is Taylor at? I have no idea. You need to tell us where she's at. I don't know where she is. I don't have a clue. Well, if you were put in a situation where someone pushed you to do something for whatever reason, maybe against your will, perhaps, in self-defense, if something happened and you're scared, don't be scared. 
okay, if something happened, like I said, you're not a bad person. You're, you're not a career criminal. This is a person who's traveled across states to take care of a friend. If something happened, tell us. I don't know where she is. We, we have a detective talking to Kyle right now. We know you have text Kyle and ask him if he was at that farm on the 8th. Multiple times. We may have. I mean, I don't... Then you withhold that information from us. The person who is trying to help a friend out, who cares for their friends, doesn't lie to the police when they are looking for them. I didn't think that, that was... Tell me what you did to her. I didn't do anything to her. Tell me what Zach did. Somebody harmed her, and she's probably out of that farm. Zach it was never even around her. So Kyle. Kyle's never been around her. Brandon. He's never been around her. Then I leave you. So you're the only I one that was with her on this day at this farm that you did not disclose to us? I didn't do anything to her. You if she's at that farm, we're going to find her because we're executing a search warrant out there right now. That's fine, but she's not going to be there. Then where is she at? I don't know where she where's is. Where's her body at? I don't know where she is. She's dead, though. You I know don't that? believe that. Ashley, the thing is, is, we know that you had knowledge that phone was there because a, a text was sent to your phone from that phone. It was it was in your possession. It was at the same location. So either either Taylor was sitting in your bedroom with you, right, texting you, and you somehow didn't know, and then stayed in your car with you and communicated with other individuals the entire next day, all the way out of the way, and went to this wedding and was hiding in your car. There's just, there's no way humanly possible that you didn't have knowledge of the phone. Yeah, the, I don't know. The thing is, I think that you're concerned. I think that you're scared. Y'all need to stay in the stretch for a sec? You may. Was a search warrant being executed at the time you were talking to Ashley MacArthur? It was. Okay. And was Taylor Wright's body discovered out there on Burt Road? It was. Was Ashley MacArthur arrested on October 19th, 2017? She was. Okay. And when she was arrested, did she have another phone on her? She did. Okay. Because you guys still had the first phone from September 18th, correct? Correct. Okay. The second phone, um, did Andrew Smith provide an extraction report for that phone? He did. And did you review it? I did. Um, did you find some some records in her phone that were relevant to this case? Yes, we did. Judge, uh, I believe State 14 was already moved into evidence. Okay. Yeah. Yes. The celebrate report. Yes, ma'am. And may I publish some of the documents? Well, actually, let's go through, um, for record purposes, what is page one? It's a cover sheet, description of the phone. Okay. And then the next few pages are what? 75 through 77? Yes. Uh, the first one, first page looks like... There's a conversation between Ashley MacArthur and Jeff Wright. Okay. And then the next few pages are going to be 86 through 87. Is that a conversation with Cassandra? Okay. Yes. Okay. And then page um, 220. Is that um, Ms. MacArthur just saying that she got her phone back? Or the cell phone number back? Yes. Okay. And then page 513, um, is that a number for James, one of her employees? Yes. Okay. And then 2763, 
Is that a hyperlink to a um, wedding invitation? It is one of the uh, items on the page, yes. Okay. And then page 5723, is that a hyperlink for a, um, is that the right term, hyperlink? It is. <laughs> for a Gulf Power Bill? It is. That's the top one. Okay. And then page 5851, is that a hyperlink to a picture of Taylor and Ashley? Yes, it is. Okay. And then on page 6334, is that a hyperlink to another Gulf Power Bill? Yes, bottom one on the page. And then page 6467, is that a... What was that? 6334. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Page 6467, is that a bill of sale for a boat? It is. And then... Is there an email um, for Sam's Club? Is it just showing a bill? It is. And what's is. the account balance? Shows to be $10,236.60. Okay, and then the next couple of um, attachments, what are those? It's an email uh, regarding, looks like, Pensacola Automatic Amusement. Um, it's a company. Is it repossession information? Yes, yeah, it's repossession information about equipment uh, for Pensacola Automatic Amusement. Judge, I just like to publish some of these pages, not all. Okay. Okay. Page 5361. And is this page one that just shows um, the cell phone number for Ms. MacArthur? Yes. I know, I, it's awkward. Pull the give. microphone towards you. There you go. There you go. Okay, and now on line, I think that's 48, is that, I can't see that, is that 40, 4879? Yes, 4879. Okay. And then if you click on this blue link right here, does it give you a bigger picture of this? It does. And um, this is showing the wedding invitation that Ms. MacArthur was referring to. That's correct. And then this is going to be page 5723, line 271.84. Is this, if you click on this link right here again, does it make this picture bigger? Yes. And um, what does this say? This is a Gulf Power bill. Uh, the address is for sticks. Brandon Beatty's company. Looks like a bill was paid by Ashley MacArthur for the amount of three thousand two hundred and seventy-four dollars on eight fourteen of seventeen. Okay. And online twenty eight zero four zero page fifty eight fifty one. If you click on this hyperlink, does it uh, make this picture bigger? Yes, it does. Okay. And who's in that picture? That's a picture of. Ashley MacArthur and the victim, Taylor Wright. And in this picture, do they appear to be the same size? They do. This is page 6334, line 31539. Again, if you click on this hyperlink, does it make this picture bigger? It does. And what is that? That is another Gulf Power bill. Again, the same address. Sticks, billiards, uh, Paid on eight twenty-eight of seventeen for fifteen hundred dollars and sixty-six cents. Okay. Paid by Ashton Carson. All right. This is page sixty-four sixty-seven, and if you look at line three, two four one seven. If you click on this blue hyperlink, does it make this picture bigger? Yes, it does. And what is this? This is a bill of sale where Ashley MacArthur signed to have purchased a nineteen seventy-eight boat or yacht for twelve thousand eight hundred dollars. And what's the date? is dated July 25th, 2017. Did your office also obtain a number of bank records for Ashley MacArthur? Yes, we did. And does it show the movement of that $34,000 cashier's check 
that you um, just spoke to her about in that interview? Yes, it does. Did the bank records include July, August, and September, um, plus some past due accounts? They do. Seen them recently, just give a just flash. Give number. Oh, this is going to be 25 through 42. 25 through 42. Subject to our previous objection on 38 through 42. Okay. Detective Gigliotti, if you will just um, look through those records and see if you recognize them. Mr. Barras, it said subject to the objection previously discussed. Oh, I didn't hear him. I'm sorry. Uh, 38 through 42, he had no objection, I believe. Is that correct, Mr. Barras? No, he had no objection from for 25 through 37. Right. And okay. then otherwise he had an objection. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, I recognize all of these. Okay, and are those the bank records for Ashley MacArthur that um, you obtained in order to track that movement of that thirty-four thousand dollars? They are. Um, and then are thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, and forty-two just past due accounts um, in her bank records for her vehicles? Yes, they okay. are. Judge, at this time, I'd move states twenty-five through forty-two into evidence. Okay, um, twenty-five through thirty-seven are received without objection. 38 through 42 are received over objection. Judge, and I would just, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I think he just said thank you. Okay. Um, and I just would ask to publish 25 and 26. Okay. This is States 25. What does this show? This is a document where Taylor Wright was added to the purely Southern account of Wells Fargo. And does this appear to be her signature right here? It does. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. Here. It had Taylor Wright's signature on it. Thank you. We're back. And what does this show? This is a thirty-four thousand uh, dollar check. Well, That's, actually, it's, it's a it's deposit slip for the thirty-four thousand dollar check that was made on eight sixteen seventeen in the the purely Southern account. And what does this show? Okay, That's which which exhibit? I'm oh, sorry. This is twenty six. Okay. This is the, the check itself, the $34,000 cashier's check. And is this the document that you and Detective Wilhite were showing Ms. MacArthur during the interview? It is. And this was the signature you were questioning her about? It is. Okay. A couple more questions. Back to September 18th, when you went to Ms. MacArthur's home. Do you remember that? That time frame? Yes. Okay. Um, and it sounds like from the recording you walked around the property. I did. Okay. Did you go outside, like in the backyard area? We did. And did you walk around the front? I did. Okay. Um, describe the yard. So the backyard was fairly unkept. Uh, there were at least a dog or two and a pig that seemed to have kind of tore the yard up. Okay. Um, did you see any concrete flower beds back there? No, ma'am. 
And do you know, so Ms. MacArthur's home on Rain Tree at the time, do you know the closest Home Depot to her residence? Yes. Where was that? It's on Davis Highway, maybe two and a half miles from her residence. Okay. Was Taylor's car moved from Cassandra's house to the Pensacola Police Department? It was. Do you remember approximately when? I would put it in later, later September. Okay. This Tom Thumb and Beulah that Ms. MacArthur was referencing in her interview, did you have one of your investigators go get video surveillance? I did. Okay. And who, which investigator? That was Detective Savage. Thank you, sir. Those are all my questions. All right. Mr. Barry Barossett's going to ask you questions. Remember, if it's yes or no, answer yes or no. Don't volunteer extra information. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Please, the court. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I think you started testifying uh, yesterday afternoon about 3.55, somewhere around there, is that correct? It may be right. Um, the last thing that she asked you about was a uh, visit to Ms. Uh, MacArthur's home on September the 18th. Correct. Correct. Do you remember uh, a brief conversation with her telling her you might come out sometime? Prior to the visit? Yes. Yes. You didn't tell her when, though, did you? Not that I recall. So basically, when you visit them on September the 17th, 2017, they didn't expect you at that time, did they? They may not have. And you uh, went to that home with uh, Mr. Wilhoyt, uh, Detective Wilhite, did you not? Correct. During the time that you were at that home, approximately how long would you say you were there? I know we listened to the recording. I'm not going to go through that. Sure. I would approximate an hour. You went through the entire home, you ask them if they had any, if you could look through the house, right? Correct. They let you look through the house, correct? They did. You went through the bedrooms? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You went through the living room? Yes, sir. You went through the bathrooms? Yes. You went down to the basement? I did. You saw that there was some construction down there? It appeared to be, yes. Uh, you, yes. You were outside and you saw that a deck had been built out there, correct? Yes, yes. Did you notice whether or not any concrete footings had been out there? I didn't notice any. You looked into a garage? I didn't. I think, you, did you look into an attic too? I don't recall going in an attic. And, and you walked all around the house, correct? I did, yes. And along with Detective uh, Wilhoyt, and you also uh, checked out the yard completely? So. I did not walk around with Detective Wilhite. He stayed in the house and spoke with Zachary MacArthur. Okay. I walked around with okay. Ash MacArthur. But you were the one to check the house out? Yes, correct. Obviously, you were looking for things that related to the death or disappearance of uh, Miss Wright. Is that correct? Correct. You didn't find anything, did you? No, sir. And they were cooperative with you at that time, were they not? They were. Now, so we can get this out of the way fairly easily. Uh, you also uh, participated in a search of the house at a later date, did you not? Uh, I don't recall being there for a search later. Did you uh, prepare an affidavit for a search warrant uh, on October the 18th, 2017 for Pensacola Amusement? I did. Did you prepare an affidavit for a search warrant 
uh, for 3961 Rain Tree on October the 18th, 2007. I may have. I wrote some of the search warrants, and Jeff Brown wrote some of them. I'm not sure. Do you have any doubts that you did? I may have, may not have written that one. Want me to show one. you the affidavit? Sure, sure. Let me. Which one did you have doubt about? To be honest with you, I don't, I don't I remember writing one or two, and I believe Jeff Brown wrote one or two. May I approach, Your Honor? You may. This isn't marked in evidence. This is just for uh, review. Sure. Certainly. Yes, correct. I did write this. Correct. For Pensacola Amusement. Correct. Okay. May I approach again? Uh, yes. Your Honor, this is just right to, to refresh your memory. Yes, sir. Thank you. You can click, pick this tab up. But... Sure. I did write that search warrant as well. That's for Rain Tree Drive. Yes. So at least you participated in two, or excuse me, in, in one walkthrough search, correct? Yes. On the 18th, and then you wrote the search warrants for October the, or signed them on October the 18th, and I think they were executed on October the 19th? Correct. The next day. Yes, Both sir. for Pensacola Amusement Park and for uh, her house at 3961 Range Tree. Yes. Now... Did you participate in the search at, on uh, Brent Lane? I did not. Were you familiar with uh, was Chad Wilhite working with you on that? On the case, yes. Yeah. Would he have prepared that affidavit for search warrant? He may have. May I approach, Your Honor? You may. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking for Chad's uh, bio. Yes, Chad Wilhite wrote the search warrant. And that would be for the Brent Lane? Correct. Because initially this investigation was initiated by the Pensacola Police Department, was it not? It was. And basically you were in charge of looking for evidence uh, which may connect in some way Ms. MacArthur to the mis disappearance of Taylor Wright. True? Correct, sir. And as a result of that, you and your associate, Detective Wilhoyd, prepared search warrants for the residents, Pensacola Amusement, and for um, Britt uh, Brit Lane. I think that was 2201, correct? Correct, sir. But you didn't participate any further in the searches themselves? I was not present for the searches, no, sir. You commented, I think, during the last statement that I uh, that I um, heard, that was played apparently or recorded on October the 19th, 2017, that uh, you mentioned something about Miss MacArthur, and I think you mentioned the fact that she had gone over to New Orleans with a friend, Audrey. Audrey had had a gallbladder surgery. You comment on how she'd spent time with her there. And you also commented on how she had gone back to be with her. You, yes. And you indicated to her that doesn't sound like a person would be involved in a homicide, didn't you? Correct. There was another uh, thing that came up, I believe. Uh, I believe it was during one of the recorded statements. Do you recall, if I'm not mistaken, Miss MacArthur saying that Taylor Wright always carried a gun. She may have said that. And do you remember she said it was a stainless steel gun? She may have. I think this would have been State Exhibit 16. 
And if I can take a look at the certificate. That's the 918 recorded interview right. at Peabody. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> so if I recall, do you have any doubt about this, that there was a conversation in that uh, September 18th interview where she said, get back to that again. I just want to make sure I had the right one. She always carries a gun of stainless steel. And, and I think you stated, we have not found that. The gun was not found. Is that correct? Sounds accurate. Okay. And yet, there was some testimony in this case that there were two guns that were recovered from uh, Taylor Wright's car. Do you recall that? Yes. And there were photographs of them, and they were pistols, weren't they? Yes, sir. Do you recall what kind of pistols they were? If I recall correctly, there were, there were two Glock semi-automatic pistols that we yeah. recovered. No, I'm sorry, not that we recovered, that Cassandra found during a search of a vehicle. Right. And there was some question that those were later turned over to Brandon Beatty, I believe. Maybe you uh, don't yeah, know. Anyway, those guns are not what you call silver guns, silver stainless steel, are they? They were not stainless steel. The guns, I recall, were not stainless steel. So you have not found her stainless steel firearm, have you? No, sir. Not to my knowledge. There was also some discussion in that first statement that uh, uh, was taken on September the 18th, 2017, and that was exhibit number... 16. 16, if thank you. If you don't God. mind, since I've got it right here. Okay. I, I appreciate the help. Okay, sure. There was some discussion doing that. She gave you your, her phone, didn't she? She did. She didn't hesitate to give it to you? She signed a release, correct? Correct. Do you remember when she gave you that phone? It was still lit up? It wasn't locked? It wasn't locked, correct. She didn't lock it, did she? No, sir. And there was also some discussion about you had tried to get several password codes or it was encrypted in some way. You were having trouble getting into it. Correct. Didn't she tell you that the, the way she accessed it was through a thumbprint or a fingerprint? She did. And did she not allow you and a forensic person to come over to her house uh, at, on uh, Rain Tree Drive and use her computer and try and get the passcode. She did. She told you she didn't remember the passcode because she always used the thumbprint to open it. Correct. Did you at some time later, after you'd worked on the phone, try and get the thumbprint to work? Do you recall meeting her somewhere? I do. And did she put her thumb on there? I don't recall what finger. She tried some she fingers, tried to get, But she didn't, she cooperated with you trying to get that, is that correct? Well, she didn't unlock the phone, so. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> she went to your house, or you went to her house, you had a forensic guy there on her computer trying to work on, you had the phone open when she gave it to you. Sure, you're correct. Uh -huh. Let me see those exhibits here, if I could. 18, 19. These are state's exhibits 18 and 19. Uh, I want to approach the witness, if I could, Your Honor. You bet. Thank you. You're not an accountant, are you? No, sir, I'm not. I'm not either. I want you to look at state exhibit 18. Okay. Now, on the front page, there was some discussion about whether $250,000 was deposited. Do you remember that? I, I stated that there was a, a value here that says there was $250,000, $251,000. Okay. Will you look at uh, one is in a checking account? Correct. And one is where? One is in what's called a membership savings. Okay. And if you'll look at the top page of 18, you'll see that approximately 100, a little over 100000 is in the checking account, correct? Correct. Would you open and turn to the second page of that? Would you go down there and list the deposits that are made in there? Uh, do you see any deposits for $100,000? I do. 
Do you see any other deposits? No, sir. So one hundred thousand, one hundred ninety-five dollars and twenty cents. There's a lot of other smaller deposits. Or, well, actually, there's not a, some smaller. I don't think deposits. there's any other deposit. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm, there is a e deposit for one hundred ninety-four dollars ninety-five cents. Now, I want to show you what's been marked as state exhibit number nineteen. If you'd look at that, sir. Yes. Sir. Uh, this one is the one that relates to the thirty-four thousand dollar check being deposited. Correct. Yes. Would you turn to the second page? And let me, may I? Sorry, sure. Sure. Do you see anything in the in the savings account deposit? This appears to be a checking account. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me see here. Bottom part is say. See, there, there are two okay, accounts. Okay, I see. Yes. Do you see the $34,000 in that? I do. Okay. Now let's go back to defense exhibit, or state, excuse me, exhibit number 17. Mr. Barras, may I correct you and say it might be 18 for the record? Can you double check? No, yes, no. 2017. No, no. You referred to State Exhibit 17. Okay. Are you talking about State Exhibit 18? Yes, I am. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, we're going back to State Exhibit 18. Yes, sir. Do you see here where this there was a transfer from the checking account of $83,000? Yes, I do. What's the date of that? July 18th. July 18th. Does it appear that the same money is being transferred back and forth when you look at those and there's only approximately a main deposit of $100,000 and not $250,000? In the checking, yes, it looks like it's only a hundred thousand dollars. Well, even in the savings deposit, you saw where eighty-three thousand was transferred to shares, which is the yes, savings correct. Account. So it may be that only a hundred thousand was deposited, correct? Correct. Whereas there was discussions, there were discussions about her having a claim or a settlement for two hundred fifty thousand, right? Yes. But even her husband testified that she stole a hundred thousand from him. Do you recall? You aware of that you talked to him? Uh, there was conversation before about her yes getting a no. hundred thousand. Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Okay. May I ask John something? I'd like to look at State Exhibit 14. Or maybe you still have it up there, sir? <laughs> I know we've filed a bunch of yes. stuff up on you. Yes, I do. Okay. May I approach your honor? You may. Let's take a look at that if I can. I think this was shown on the video. This is a part of state exhibit number 14. And 
if you recall, they put something up on the screen and it was a bill of sale for a boat. Do you recall that? Yes. If you would, uh, what's the date of that bill of sale? July 25th, 2017. And then I think there's a check that was deposited in there. Was it not that $34,000 check? Is that in there? Maybe a separate exhibit. I think it is, but I'll look. Let's see. I've got a 26. 26. Yeah, 26 and 25. Please. Oh, you got that too? Okay. I have that. Correct. Okay. Um, the date on the sale was July 25th, 2017, correct? On the bill of sale. I believe so. I'll get it pulled back up. Correct. And would you look and see when that the check was deposited, which is exhibit number 23 and 24 that you should have up there with you? Mr. Boyle said if this is bothering you, I can stop, but I think it's, it's 25. It's 25 and 26. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm bad about names and numbers. That's all right. Uh, yes, I have 25 and 26. When was the check deposited? This shows on August 16th. So it's weeks after the boat was purchased, correct? Correct. So there's no real evidence that that money was used to purchase the boat, is there? No, sir. <coughs> there's also been discussions about a motorcycle being purchased for eight. 8300 Do you have any evidence that that was purchased with money from Taylor? I, right? don't, know. I don't know about the motorcycle. I don't know much about that. Do you, in your investigation, did you find any evidence that indicated Taylor Wright's money was used to purchase a motorcycle? No, sir. about to wrap it up here. And you don't have to worry. We, we can just make sure when you're done we get all the exhibits back. Well, I forgot to consult my car. I may have a moment to go through my notes here. I will. This, this, the phone that uh, Taylor Wright, excuse me, Ashley MacArthur had on October the 19th when she came in to see you, do you recall that? Yes. Do you recall her giving that phone to the detective before he went into the room, one of the detectives? I don't recall. You got the phone somehow, didn't you? Yes. Okay. She, is it likely she gave it to you? Uh, either that or we took it. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, you didn't have a search warrant for that phone at the time, did you? At the time, I don't think so. So does it make sense that it was given to you? 
like I said, either she gave it willingly or it was taken. I'm not, I'm not sure which one. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Rossi. Just leave, make sure you haven't picked up any exhibits. I don't think I have, Your Honor, but... Okay, just take a look. And Ms. Jensen, we're going to try to finish this witness and we'll take a break. Okay. Detective Gigliotti, the phone that Ms. McCarthy gave you on September 18th, would, would Jeff Brown be better able to explain why you couldn't get him that phone? Most no, certainly. Okay. Is he your cell phone forensic he, guy? He does all of our digital forensics. Okay. Um, and Mr. Grosset was asking you about when you went to Ms. MacArthur's house on September 18th. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. And he said that you didn't find anything related to Taylor's disappearance, correct? Correct. Now, that visit was also 10 days after the last time Taylor was known to be alive, correct? Correct. And when these search warrants were done at Pensacola Automatic Amusement, Rain Tree Drive, Britt Lane, that was almost six weeks after Taylor went missing, correct? Correct. Those are all my questions. Thank you. All right. Do you want him to, is he free to leave but stay available? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So you're free. First of all, hand the exhibits yes. that you have to me so I make sure the clerk has them. We're starting to get a lot of exhibits moving around. Or right, thank you, Ms. Jensen. 14 to 38 or 39. There's well, there's 42 40. somewhere. Yeah. Okay, you're free to leave, but you're still under subpoena. We may call. If you call, we call. You have to answer. Come back. Don't discuss your testimony. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is. We're, I'm probably going to give you a break, and then I'm going to give you a short break late in the day, where I can give you a long break now or short break. But anyway. I did put out an all-points bulletin for snacks that were not expired. I'm hoping that when you go back there, there will be something that is edible for you. If not, I will be going by Publix tonight myself. So anyway, you know the, the drill now. You're experts in that. Leave your notes and your pencils. Um, talk about anything but not the case, and then we're going to shoot for 10 till 4 to pick up where we left off. Okay? Thank y'all. Anything from the state? No, ma'am. Mr. Barry Barras? If I have my witnesses here at 1 o'clock tomorrow, is that okay? I'm, That's I'm fine. I'm just trying to get, because i got to contact my office now. Oh, I understand. Um, that sounds, sounds good to me. I don't know where we'll be. If they're, if they're not, they have to wait, but I just don't want the court to wait. No, I don't want to wait. And then when I say I don't want to wait, I don't want to wait. But really, we're talking about the jury. Right. And so I think 1 o'clock, I can't see it being before that, Ms. Jensen. I've done the best guesstimating I can do in this trial. <laughs> I feel like 1 o'clock would be after the lunch break and that sounds like a plan to me. Thank you, Okay. I'll see y'all at uh, about 10 till, okay? Thank you, Maria.